Hi guys! Welcome back to the second part of this Photoshop tutorial on the use of the histogram to evaluate and correct our picture. In the description of this video you will find a link to the first part of this tutorial. I strongly suggest you to watch it before continuing with this if you don't already done. Well, in this part of the tutorial we will see how uh, the histogram can tell us that there is something wrong in our pictures and how we can use it to uh, correct some color problems. So, let's go with the video. I would like to start the second part of this tutorial showing you this famous optical illusion. There's no way you can convince your brain that the square A and the square B are of the same color, no matter how much you will try. But I can convince you that they are by simply picking the color from one of these squares and tracing a line to connect them. Now you see. So what I'm trying to tell you is that your brain in particular situations can be easily fooled. So you should not trust him even if you are experienced but instead you have to use the tools that Photoshop and Camera Raw offers you to check the colors and the tonal values of your pictures. Let's look at this image, for example. What we can immediately see is that it is very flat and low contrasty without very dark or very bright areas, surely because of the atmospheric case. If we open the histogram, it confirms the situation. The histogram is contracted in the center, but this problem can be easily solved by using curves or levels. Let's use the levels that are simpler to adjust. Ctrl L. We can move the shadows to here. and the highlights to here and then we can also move a bit the center to give a little more light to the image. Now the histogram surely looks better but the image still have a big problem that is a strong blue color cast. If we pick the color of the vegetation that is supposed to be green, we see that it is not green at all. Well, the histogram can tell us this and can also tell us when we have completely solved the problem. To get this information, we have to change the histogram from RGB mode to split colors mode. Now what we can see in the histogram is that there is a huge translation of the channels, especially in the darker area, and this is the evidence of a color cast. To solve the problem we have to work on the single channels until they are overlaying. To check if our image is neutral we can also place some color samples on parts that we know they should be grey and check if they are. For example in this picture the snow. Well it is white but when uh, in shadows it should be grey not blue or red. So we can open another useful tool that is the info panel. Now when we move the picker on the image we can read on this panel the value of the pixels underneath. But we can also place a color sample by holding the shift button and clicking on the point we want. So I can place a sample in the brighter area, one in the middle tone area, always sampling the snow, and one in the darker area. Now we have these three samples and if we read their values we see that they are not grey pixels because grey pixels 
have the same value in all the three channels. Here we see they don't. If you are not comfortable in reading these numbers, you can also open the color picker and see the colors. For example, this under the sun is yellowish, but this is blue, and this is even more blue. In any case, we probably don't want to completely neutralize the landscape because sunlight is yellow, while the light coming from the sky is blue, so it is correct having that the parts under the sun are yellowish, while that in the shadow are bluish. So, what we can do to correct this image? Well, this time let's use curves. Ctrl M to open them. Now we want to switch between the single channels and adjust them individually. So let's start from the blue channel. We want to move the shadows to the right and we can do it this way. And as you can see here, we also want to move the highlights to the left. Now, as you see, everything is too much green, so we have to adjust the green channel in the same way. And now everything is going much, much better. Let's adjust a bit the red channel also. Now, if we check our samplers, we see they are much more neutral, even if not completely grey. Here you can see before and after, before and after. Now the color starts looking a lot more natural. Then if you want, you can adjust the saturation of the single colors at your pleasure. To give your personal touch to the picture, this is on you. The same considerations and operations can be done when processing raw files inside Camera Raw or Lightroom. In this example, we have opened a sea landscape in Camera Raw. Here the sky is blue and the water is blue, so is all this blue justified or did we have a color cast? Well, looking at this histogram, we can say we have a color cast. This means we are losing a lot of fine colors that are present in this picture because they are all covered by a blue fog. If we place the mouse pointer over the clouds, we can see, if you look under the histogram here, uh, there are the RGB values, that the B value is higher than the other two, so this means that these clouds have a bluish color. We can solve the problem in the same way we have done before, using the curves directly inside Camera Row. First, we can expand the histogram, because the image is a bit underexposed. Then we can work on the single channels, first by sliding the blue channel, to the left, like this, and the highlights a little bit on the right side. Then we can adjust the red channel, moving it on the other side. Now I can go here, for example, and increase the vibrance or the saturation and I'm giving more saturation to all the colors and not only adding more blue to a blue image. Here you can see before and after. Before and after. So you see that looking at the histogram, you can see things that are not so obvious looking only at an image. 
My suggestion is to open many different pictures and try to practice by making adjustments based on the histogram so you can better see the relation between what you do and what you get. Thank you. Okay, I hope you have learned something useful. Obviously, you have to try yourself to make your own experience. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel because many more will come. Thank you.